Well, good day, guys. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the 2023 NRL Grand Final Preview. Previously, I've spoken about the 2021 Grand Final that was not at Acor ANZ Stadium. And last year, obviously, spoke about that game between my boys, the Parramatta Eel and the Penrith Panthers. But neither the Eels or the Rabbitohs will be there on Grand Final Day, which is very unfortunate for myself and Mick from the Cast Patrol. Welcome aboard, and thank you very much, Mick, for coming and doing this preview. I'm keen to talk about the Grand Final with you. No worries. Thanks for having us in today, now, mate. I'm pumped. It's going to be a big day on Sunday. We're heading out to the game, and even as a neutral, it's still going to be the best game. 1v2, what more can you ask for? And commiserations to Rabbits and Eels for being the last two Grand Final losers. Oh, it hurts. It does, it does. I'm heading to the game myself. I um, I won't speak about whether I'm tipping them or whether I'm just sitting with them. I got the seats I could get, and I am sitting with the Broncos supporters for this game. Um, I think I'm actually kind of directly behind the post, which normally I'm off to the right, and I was up to the left a little bit for the Raiders a few years ago, which was unreal during the Viking clap, and then 2021 we didn't get to be a part of, which was a massive shame. But, yes, I am going to the grand final. Panthers, Broncos, it's the two best sides all year, just like in the AFL, arguably, the teams that finish first and second on the ladder. Haven't seen this for a few years, but there is a lot to look forward to. There are plenty of different matchups across the park as well. Um, look, you got this matchup here above me, but even though it's not players going against each other, where do you think the biggest matchup across this game starts with? Oh, I think it's going to be the forward pack. I think everyone's spoken about the backs in depth, but I think the forward pack. We see what Penrith do. They're a well oiled machine. We said on our podcast, I think the Brisbane individually, their players have more X factor. So, like looking at Payne Haas, Carrigan. Even um, Kate will like they have that size of ability to offload in them, ability to break a line. Whereas you look at the Penrith forward pack, you don't see Leota, Fisher Harris breaking a line. Even Yo, I mean, he's got the offload ball playing, but doesn't have that in him. It's just, it's a matter of time to see what actually wins. If, if Broncos can dominate that Penrith forward pack and just stop the momentum of getting wrestled out of the game, then it's almost up for grabs. But if Brisbane let them in and let Penrith just do their thing where they just take over and just set after set, drowning him, forcing Reynolds to kick on last long kick, it's just going to go in Penrith's way real quickly. So I think that forward pack is going to be really crucial. How do you let's get that? into let's get into the team lineups where I'll speak about when the key matchup comes up yep. for me. So Dylan Edwards, last year's Clive Churchill medalist at fullback, going up against Reese Walsh, who's been fantastic but un- in- ineligible for. Uh, Dalliam, uh, fullback of the year due to suspension last year, but I think Reese Walsh has been the fullback of the year. Then you've got the Dalliam rookie of the year, Sonia Taruva, on the wing going up against Jesse Arthurs, who it's interesting. There's been a few people mentioned that Corey Oates could be a late come in, but I actually think Jesse Arthurs has been playing well, and I think he deserves the spot this week in the grand final. Yeah, he's then been playing got, out of his skin. He's been playing very well. Then you've got Isaac Targo in the centres going up against Katoni Stagg. Starting to warm up a little bit in this final series because I think overall, and it showed last night with the Dallium Awards going to Herbie, that Katoni Staggs has had a quiet year. He's had a good year, but he's had a quiet year in that sense of the centres. Then you've got Stephen Crichton. A lot of people's pick probably for the first try scorer. He loves to turn up in the big game. Playing in his final Penrith Panthers game, I guess maybe unless there's the um, the Super League matchup there, um, the World Club Challenge. But obviously off to the Bulldogs after this game and then the Daly M Centre of the Year, Herbie Farmworth. On the wing, Brian Toto. I've actually seen a few people put him as a smoky for the Clive Churchill medal. He's at massive odds coming off a, a big game last week and he's going up against Selwyn Cobbo, who I think has been fairly quiet for the most part this final series. I started with Toll before you go on um, and talk about Clive Churchill medal. Fun fact, a, an outside back has never won the Clive Churchill medal. So that's a winger or a centre. So wow. I know a lot of people are tipping Toll, but I, I I don't know. I'm big, I'm big on stats and it seems to always go the way of the spine and only four forwards have won in the history. So if you're looking, I think a spine member is more than likely. In this instance. As you saw last year, Toll scored two tries in the final, had a shit ton of run metres and still couldn't get over Dylan Edwards. So, yeah, yeah. That's, that's my start there for that. Nice one. I like that start. 
Uh, number sixes is Jerome Luai going up against Ezra Mam, the 5'8th of the year at the Dallium Awards the other night. Uh, Battle of the number sevens, a very important one. This one, it is Nathan Cleary up against Adam Reynolds. Adam Reynolds obviously looking for a bit of redemption to the 2021 grand final and Nathan Cleary potentially looking for a second Clive Churchill medal. Then you've got Moses Leota up against Thomas Flegler. Flegler's last game as well. He's off to the Dolphins in 2024. So, um, again, maybe the World Club Challenge he might play, but potentially his last game for his club. Mitch Kenny up against Billy Walters. Billy Walters has had a fantastic game in the prelim last week. And then here it is. This is my matchup. James Fisher-Harris's finals form has been unreal. I think he's had a quieter season. He still had a good year, but his finals form is unreal. And Payne Haas is one of the hardest men to stop in the NRL. He's a workhorse. He's always up there at the prop of the year for the Dallium Awards. And this is, you mentioned that everyone's focused on the outside backs and the kicking game. But in this Ford pack, it is James Fisher-Harris and Payne Haas for me where this game will be won. And honestly, a massive smoky for the Clive Churchill medal, either of these players. Then in the back row, you've got Scott Sorensen up against Kurt Capewell, former Penrith Panther. Liam Martin, the Dallium back rower of the year, up against Jordan Rickey. And rounding off the team, Isaiah Yo versus Patrick Carrigan, the lock of the year. The bench of the Panthers, Jack Cogger, Lindsay Smith, Spencer Lenu, and Luke Garner. And the bench of the Broncos, Tyson Smoothie, Brandon Piacora, Kobe Hetherington, and Keenan Palacia. So looking at that team on paper right now, you think probably the, the Penrith Panthers have the edge, but you could easily make a, a team out of both those teams that can be fantastic. But we've spoken a little bit about that forward pack, so let's touch a little bit on the backs now. Can Dylan Edwards potentially win back-to-back -back Clive Churchill medals? I don't think there's no reason why he can't. You've seen what he does. Each week he's putting up the run meters. He's always in almost every try with Penrith, like Nathan Cleary. He's the perfect support. I think with Jerome Luai being not playing at 100% fitness with that uh, shoulder injury, I think Edwards, he's shown he's stepped up and he's played even better in this final series and I've seen him play throughout the regular season. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't see why not. I'm also liking Walsh from Brisbane. If they, if they somehow can pull the win off, He's a good shout for Clive Churchill at fullback. So, mate, there's a lot of good matchups in this match. I'm glad that these two teams are meeting in the final. Do you think that whoever leads this game at half time, if we're not locked up, goes on to win the game? Or is this one of those games where you could see either team leading and it just comes down to the second half and whether teams can capitalise their opportunities? Well, funny you say that because the team who scored the first try in the last seven grand finals has gone on to win the match. So history shows you score the first try in the last seven yeah, grand finals, you win the match. So, yeah, I think if Brisbane are going to have any chance against Penrith, they can't be starting slow. I think they have to be starting fast. They have to either be up at half time or drawing at half time because we've seen what Penrith do in second halves and they just continue. They just can motor through. Like look at Melbourne last week. They couldn't even get a try in. Um, yeah, it just it's just going to be one of those second halves that Penrith – if they're on top, they're just going to keep going along with it. Nathan Clear will do his game. Forwards will go through their work and the backs will do their run metres. So, yeah, have to be leading at half time if you're Brisbane. Going into this game, uh, in my opinion, the Penrith Panthers have the better defence. But it's very split for me on who has the better attack. I would probably slightly give the edge to Brisbane, even though Penrith have obviously scored more points in recent weeks. Who do you think has the better attack going into this game on Sunday? It's um, it's a tough question, that, because like you, like you were sort of tossing up, it's, it's a really a toss-up. I think the way to analyse them is Penrith are really good in terms of, like, system plays. Like, most of their tries, they scored in a similar fashion. It's out the back, clear is orchestrating it, either a line run from the second rower or it's done out the back. So I think their attack system-wise is better, but Brisbane have this X factor that if these players can just turn up at the right moments, it's flashes of brilliance. Like, you look at Reese Walsh last week. He got that line break and then plays onto Billy Walters on the inside. You Penrith can't really defend something like that. I know they, they won't leave as big as a gap as uh, Paul Rocco Berry did, but it's just one of those things that have the X factor. You look at Cobo on the wing, and then you've got Adam Reynolds, who 
We've seen what he can do in finals matches, and he's one of the most clutch players in the NRL for a reason. So, yeah, I'm I'm leaning just towards the Penrith side, but in terms of unpredictability, I'm going to have to lean with the Brisbane Broncos there just for their X-factor ability. Yeah, I agree with you on that X factor. And I think the Broncos in this game are going to get their opportunities. Even if the possession, you know, stays at Penrith 60, Broncos 40, you're going to see a couple of line breaks. You're going to see some razzle-dazzle. But we've seen some errors within these Brisbane Broncos. Even, you know, their start last week against the Warriors, a little bit concerning. We'll go back to the start of the year. Now, the Penrith Panthers had a bit of a slow start to the year lost the World Club Challenge, and then they lost the first game against these Brisbane Broncos. They met in round one, and it was, I'm pretty sure I'm getting this right, but it was 13 points to 12 in the opening game. It was a field goal to seal the deal for the Broncos, and everyone thought it was a fluke because the Broncos were paying $5 at the time. Then you go a little few weeks later, and the Penrith Panthers get their revenge at Suncorp. Now, How big is it for the Broncos knowing that, you know, they only lost by 11 points in that game without their star playmaker in Adam Reynolds, especially based off the kicking game that we've seen recently? Do you think in the Broncos' minds they know that they can do this or do you still think there's that little bit of scare that what they've been able to do to teams in the previous years and the whole three-peat system in their head? What do you think the Broncos, while they're sitting at the restaurant, because that's what they're doing? (laughs) They're sitting around having discussions. Yeah, look, like you said, I think it's going to go a long way, especially that round one victory over Penrith. I think it shows that not many teams beat Penrith. And to actually say that you've done it this season when they're in red-hot form and they've won another minor premiership, it it goes a long way for confidence. And, And then you look at the other game when they didn't have Adam Reynolds steering the ship and they still get close. It's promising signs. And I think the way Brisbane are playing at the minute, all their players are playing with a lot of confidence. And that's what you need when it comes to finals time. Just players to step up and do their job and not not a second guess because in finals, it's the quickest game of them all other than maybe origin. And you don't have time to second guess. It's it's your gut instinct. And if you're making those tackles in the line, running those shapes, then that's going to be the difference in this match. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about it. I have uh, I've got the script. The NRL. You got the script. The script. I've got the script oh, no. for this year. 2023 grand final, and that'll obviously lead into the winner, which will be my tip. So the first 10 minutes, guys, it is a bit of a grind. No tries are scored in the first 10 minutes of this game. So neither team off to a fast start. But Brisbane are getting downfield. Brisbane are getting downfield, and Ezra Mam has the ball. Ezra Mam puts in a pass, and Herbie Farmworth, who was in some doubt for this year's grand final, scores the first try of the game. And as Cas- as Mick has said from Cast Patrol, that the team that scores in the last seven has gone on to win it. So can the Brisbane Broncos hold on to this current lead of four points to nil? But it is not four points to nil because Adam Reynolds converts it. It is six points to nil. And this try comes in the 12th minute of the match. Six minutes later is the Penrith Panthers going downfield Jerome Luai with the ball. It's fourth tackle, and he puts in a grubber. And last year's Clive Churchill medal winner, Dylan Edwards, scores just to the left. Bang! (laughs) And we are locked up at six points to six, going into the 19th minute of this match. We've got a bit of a gap here. We've got nine minutes of play before uh, holding on Martin and Cleary. But bang! Payne Haas scores for the Brisbane Broncos. I said Payne Haas and James Fisher-Harris is going to be a big battle there, but Payne Haas so hard to stop. He scores for the Broncos in the 28th minute, and it's 12 points to six. And then we get this quieter period, teams trying to grind down, and we head to the sheds with the Broncos 12, the Panthers 6. So the Panthers, you know, they've got to come out firing in the second half. Need a, a bit of a line. Half-time speech, they need one. They do need one. They do need one. Let's let's get this three-peat, they're saying. Let's let's do it. We know what we're capable of. Halftime, Broncos 12, Panthers 6. It's a line bank from the Broncos. It's a pass to Adam Reynolds. Reynolds gets it back to Reese Walsh, and both fullbacks have scored in the 2023 grand final in the 45th minute, five minutes after halftime. It is the Broncos breaking through, and the score is 18 points to 6. But the Panthers aren't done with yet. In the 58th minute, a long ball out from who else but Nathan Cleary, and it goes to Brian Toto on the wing. 
It's about to be a six-point game. If Nathan Cleary can kick the goal and he does not kick it, and this, folks, is the final try of the game, and the wow. Brisbane Broncos are going to win the grand final 18 points to 10 on Sunday wow. night. Okay, so you're going Brisbane Broncos on Sunday. I am going the Broncos. Okay, I like it. That's, uh, I'm, I'm opposite. I'm going Penrith. But you know what? Like I said, it's a toss-up. I can see it going either way. But that's a big result for Brisbane if they do it that way. Well, I, I'll tell you what. Picking him by eight points is pretty bold. But if Broncos win this, and I know it definitely can happen, I don't think that they'll win by, like, two points. I think they win by a decent margin. If the Broncos are to win this game, they win by six or more, in my opinion, because I think that their opportunities of attack will be there. Now, they could lead to knock-ons. They could lead to intercepts, things like that. We know Stephen Crichton is going to be looking for an intercept absolutely all game, but I think the Broncos can capitalise on their opportunity, and they're kind of being slept on. I think they deserve to be underdogs going into the game, but I think there's a lot of people going for the Penrith Panthers here when they've shown this season at times that they can be beatable. And, uh, yeah, I am going the Brisbane Bronco. I'm going to go Reese Walsh for the Clive Churchill medal. I seem to always go a fullback, don't I? Because I know last year I picked <laughs> Clint Gutherson. Oh, um, the wrong one. Yeah, I had I had money on Edwards. I did have money on Edwards. Okay. But I, uh, I, I couldn't back against the Parramatta Eels last year. Um, if the Panthers are to win this game, I will go with Nathan Cleary to win the Clive Churchill medal. But my second pick, which is, I guess, the Smokey. Well, first off, Smokey for the Broncos is Payne Haas. I've mentioned it all game, and I think he's going to score a grand final try. Uh, but Liam Martin, you know, he's gotten the back rower of the year. He's playing with confidence. He was playing great origin footy having a fantastic year. If he comes up with a massive play in this grand final, just like Dylan Edwards last year, it's all riding on the wall for Liam Martin to potentially win the Clive Churchill medal. But you said it, Mick, you've got the Penrith Panthers. Who is your first try scorer, score prediction, and that Clive Churchill medal? Yeah, so I think I'm going to go first try scorer, Liam Martin. I think $19 is a bit of value there. And yeah, I just like the line running. He's running at Ezra Mam. I think Ezra Mam's one of the most uh, missed tackled players in the comp. Like just misses tackles for fun, I guess. But I guess he backs up in the tack. Um, for the Clive Churchill medal, because I, I think Penrith will win, I think Cleary is just the obvious answer. I know it's boring, but yeah, I, I'm just going off the stats where the spine members usually tend to get it. And what Nathan Cleary did against Melbourne was one of the best performances I've seen of him in recent years. Like, he got the ball, Luai, not in the picture, and just did it all himself. It was impressive, especially against the Storm. People go, no, oh, Storm not that good this year. Storm still towed up half the competition. Like, mm. they're not just a walk in the park. So, yeah, I'm going Nathan Cleary there. I think he can win his second uh, Clive Churchill and equal the most Clive Churchills won by a player with Billy Slater and Brad Clyde. Um, and my margin, I'm going to say Panthers by 12. So I think it's going to be Penrith up at the break. Bit of a grind for a bit, and I think Penrith just score like a late try and it sort of ices the game off. So Panthers by 12 is my prediction for the margin. There you go. Panthers by 12 and the Broncos by 8. Mick, I want to thank you so much for jumping on on this preview. No Make sure you let everyone know where they can find the Cast Patrol if you're not already following. 100%. Yeah, well, thanks for having us on. It's always been fine week. It's always the best best week of the year, apart from State of Origin, unless uh, Blues lose. Um but yeah, uh, to follow the Cast Patrol, it's we're at the Cast Patrol on Instagram and TikTok. I'm pretty sure it's the same or at the Cast Patrol podcast. I'm sure you'll chuck out like a uh, link tree or something down below for people to check out our recent podcast. We did a grand final preview. It's more on the betting side of things and basically the unders lines, uh, the handicaps and try scorers. Um, yeah, and we got some big things coming up for Cast Patrol. So give us a follow and uh, join along the ride. If you're not following Entertain House, what are you doing? Because you have Absolutely. to be watching these vlogs. So hopefully I'll run into you on Grand Final Day. Maybe I'll get a feature in the vlogs finally. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan for sure. And and hopefully we're both either going up against each other or teaming up for the uh, the Sports Shed TV charity match in oh, 2024. Yes. I know yes, we both 100%. want to be a part of that one. 
Oh, for sure. It'd be great. We should have scored a double last time. Hopefully, they score four this time. <laughs> yes, hopefully. All right, guys, make sure you check out Cast Patrol. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Let us know your tips in the comments, your winner, your Clive Churchill medal, your score prediction, and your first try scorer. Hope you enjoyed this video. I do apologize that it was a little bit later than my NRL tips normally, but it was fantastic. I'll see you guys later on grand final day.